Nigerians, I will speak. Even if today is the last day I will spend in this world. I want you to know that the battle Ashwaju is fighting to rid this country of endemic corruption is a battle that cannot be left in his hand alone. Every head of parastatas in Nigeria must stand up to let him know the rot in your own establishment. I tell you, NDIC stinks. There's a lot of rot going on. They say when you fight corruption, corruption fights you. Now, the document you see in my hand is one of the ways the corruption engineers in Nigeria are fighting back. You know, each time you say you want to have a true change, like the one brought about by President Ashwad Bola Ahmed Sinumbu, you will have the change champions who will support him, but you will have the change skeptics and the game change game changers who will frustrate all his effort to rid Nigeria of this mess. Now, this is the purported new act of the NDIC. And I tell you for nothing, this is a Mephiles act. I tell you because here they have taken away the powers of Mr. President in respect of the NDIC. Let me start by telling you the mandate of the NDIC. The NDIC is set up as an independent agency of government to ensure that depositors' money is protected in all the banks and all financial institutions to protect it so that Nigerians can be protected from the misbehavior of bank directors, whether in conspiracy with the CBN or when they are acting alone. That is why the NDIC has been set up as an independent body to ensure that depositors do not cry, even when banks fail. So there are four mandates. The first mandate of the NDIC is to guarantee Nigerians who have deposits in all these banks that relax, be calm, your deposit is safe. Number two is to inspect the banks, because prevention is better than cure, to go around the various banks and ensure that the, the banks are not messing around with depositors' funds to ensure that creditors are, I mean, those who are borrowing money from the banks are those who have the capacity to pay and to ensure that the bank is run in the right way to bring about the happiness and the wellness of depositors. That's our second mandate, to go to the banks and ensure that we prevent collapse. Now, the third mandate is... Whenever the central bank eventually declares that a bank has failed, the NDIC, without interference of anybody, should go there and resolve what is happening. What do you do? You begin to gather the data of depositors with the aim of ensuring that deposit depositors get the, the, the sum that is meant for them. For example, if, you, if a microfinance bank fails, for instance, we first pay them 200000 even if they, now if they have more than that, we are going to liquidate the assets of the of the banks. We are going to go after those who are run, who are you know owing the bank, and we are going to now make sure that we pay back the balance. But I tell you, that is not what is happening now. They've taken over. The cabal have taken over NDIC, and they took this particular act to the former president Buhari 48 hours to his living office. They knew at that time that the man was so busy and he would not be able to read everything they have put here. Therefore, they got him to sign it. Now, I tell you another thing. Another fraud was committed. This document that was signed is materially different from the vote and proceedings of the National Assembly that passed it. When I was appointed, I told all Nigerians, I am not celebrating. I am going to be part of those who will work with Ashiwaju to rid this country of mess. Do not congratulate me until I have left NDIC better than I met it. Therefore, no sooner than we were appointed by the president, waiting for confirmation, they quickly introduced a new bill, a law that will truncate everything that we wanted to do. So I participated in the, House, in the National Assembly because as a lawmaker, I am a lawyer of over 30 years at the bar. So I know that whatever is passed by the National Assembly and assented to by the president will be what my board will implement. So I was interested in every detail 
of what they were passing. My God, what has happened now is completely different from what was passed. Let me tell you, not all Nigerians are corrupt. The National Assembly still has so many senators who are men of integrity. The House of Representatives, not all of them are corrupt. There are men of integrity. They knew at that time that if they introduce this section that I'm about to talk about to them on the floor, they will vote against it. So what did they do? It was hidden somewhere. It was not part of what was passed by the National Assembly. The National Assembly passed a board, a board that will have the representatives of the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria to, to pretend over the affairs of the NDIC to ensure that the NDIC is able to discharge its duties. Now, it also gave Mr. President the free hand to appoint competent Nigerians who are capable of becoming managing directors and executive directors. You know what they have done now? They have tied the hands of Mr. President and they said only someone recommended by a Mefele alone can be the managing director or the executive director. You know, in the previous act, Mr. President has the freedom to appoint any competent Nigerian to superintend over the affairs of the NDIC. Now, when the National Assembly passed, when the, uh, I have the vote and proceedings of the Senate, the original vote and proceedings, you know, I understand that they are trying to doctor and I call this clerk of the National Assembly. Don't let them put your name in a mess. Some workers are compromising. Don't allow them. They forget that the vote and proceedings is in the hand of 109 senators. So if you doctor one, you cannot doctor all the others. The vote and proceedings is in the hands of 360 House of Representative members. Because I participated, I was there. So I have the clean copy which preserved the right of Mr. President to appoint managing director without recommendation of CBN governor, to appoint executive director without recommendation of CBN governor, to, which allows the seized geopolitical zones to be represented. You know what they have done now? They have removed the, the representatives of the seized geopolitical zones. They have now fraudulently made the permanent secretary who does not have time to be the chairman of the board. How can the permanent secretary be a judge in his own cause? That is the ministry supervising the affairs of NDIC. How can the head of that ministry also be the head of NDIC? Do you know why? I visited the permanent secretary and he told me that, Honorable Blatif, I am telling you, I told them several times, do not make the mistake of making me the chairman of the board. I have a thousand and one things to do as the permanent secretary minister of finance i have 36 commissioners of finance waiting for me at hilton i have so many things to do they know they know that i will not have time to participate so that they can do all the mess they want to do secondly do you know what they have done in this act that is annoying they have killed the career progression of all the 1600 workers in ndic how can you say that somebody who is working as a teacher should not have the hope that one day I will become the principal. So what they have done here is that no worker, no director in NDIC can ever progress to become executive director, to become the managing director, because they said, even if you work all your years in the NDIC, only the central bank can appoint and recommend who should be the executive director or managing director. NDIC is an independent body from the central bank. Central bank should be in charge of their own executive directors. They should not truncate the career of 1,600 Nigerians. Now there is protest among the workers. Now they have demotivated the staff. They, they have demoralized the staff. There is no way they can ever rise. I call on Mr. President never to act on this. And I tell you what is worse. Which one is affecting depositors? The one that is affecting depositors is that NDIC will no longer be able to make depositors smile. I tell you for nothing, I have thousands of petitions on my table by Nigerians who are owed by the NDIC, who find it difficult to claim their rights from the NDIC. They are frustrated. As I speak, they can come out. You know, because the NDIC 
has so many useless sections here. The sections that say, if you don't come and claim your right between so-so time, the NDIC will become the owner of your money. It is there. How can you say a, 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 a microfinance that is closed? And I'll say, how do you now get this? These depositors come and collect their money. You say you are you are you are using town crier, town crier in today Nigeria to go and tell people in the village that all of you who have money in Uganda microfinance come and collect your money from NDIC when they have phone number that you can call. So you are denying Nigerians trillions of money, and I will not accept it. My board will not share cobble. I think of my grave. I think of my Lord. I want, if I'm removed tomorrow, I don't care. But this law now has removed the independence of the NDIC. You know how now the former law says NDIC shall be free to go and investigate, to go and investigate the, uh, the, the, the banks. Now this law says. NDIC can only go and investigate banks if central bank approves. This section, you know, before if NDIC realizes that you are supposed to collect your money, NDIC should be able to pay you free. Now, there's a section which says, even when the bank suspend payment to you, and NDIC is supposed to pay you, NDIC should go and get the approval of central bank before NDIC can, can, can pay you. This is corruption! You do not need the approval of Central Bank if you say NDIC is an independent agency. So today, we, there are 35 sections here that are put there by corruption engineers in Nigeria where they are saying for NDIC to do this, it needs the concurrence of Central Bank. For NDIC to do this, it needs the concurrence. Let me tell you, Nigeria of yesterday is different from Nigeria of today. Ashiwaju is determined. Ashiwaju is bold. He has the courage to read this country, but he cannot do it unless the heads of agencies and parastatas are ready to stand the test of time. Tell off anybody. You remove me, I don't care who am I. So long as you don't remove me from worshipping my Lord. You cannot do that. So what you are saying currently is that people think it's because it, affect, it did not affect our tenure. It's because they are not lawyers. I am a lawyer of over 30 years at the bar. When a law was done, you know, look at the previous law. We were appointed validly by Mr. President, acting under the 2006 law. We were confirmed validly. Validly by the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria acting under the 2006 law. Okay, now section 98 of the new law says, everything done under the old law shall remain valid. So what are you saying? Why are you saying my... So, our tenure is not threatened. The president has the right to dissolve. If he dissolves us, I go back to my house. I will ask my friends to celebrate because I say do not congratulate me until I have left NDIC better. How do I want to leave NDIC now? I want Mr. President not to act on this law until it is probed. Probe the passage of this law. Probe the inclusion of Section 7, which takes away the right of Ministry of Finance, which takes away the representative of Ministry of Finance and replace it with two directors from Central Bank. Probe why what is passed is fundamentally different from what is assented to probe what happened between the time the National Assembly passed it and the House of Representatives passed it and there was no divergence under the law. Do you know the status of this new act? It is null and void. Anytime Mr. President assents to a, to a bill that is materially different from what was passed by the Senate and the House of Rep. It means there's a material omission and that law was not matured for assent. There's a need for the incoming, for, for the new administration that is here by the grace of God to return this act to the National Assembly when it is proclaimed that they should investigate and allow National Assembly members to debate because I know National Assembly is made up of very reasonable people. There are senators who are men of integrity and House of Representative members who will now read, they will now read whether they will voluntarily say, 
no member should represent the six geopolitical zones in the new board. We should allow the management to be the ones doing whatever they like without anybody monitoring them. Okay, we said the national, the, 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 the NDIC is supposed to be independent. Whether with the additional 35 sections, they can take away that independence by putting us in the pockets of the Central Bank of Nigeria. This is not the NDIC I want to work with. This is not the NDIC that will guarantee payment to Nigerians. No wonder there are thousands of petitions right on my table. Do you know what they do? Among the so-called microfinance bank that they said have failed, it is a fraud. Many of these banks that have been closed are liquid, they are viable. Many of them are owned by Nigerians who wanted to assist the poor. But these people, out of their fraud, they closed them. And there are sections under the new law by which they can take over their property, by which they can transfer their deposit to their own, you know, uh, microfinance institutions. I tell you, Nigerians, let's cry out. Let's cry for this nation. Let's cry. Let's cry. There's corruption. There's corruption. There is vices. We must shout. We must not allow it to see the light of the day. Mr. President, don't act. Don't act on the new NDIC Act. Probe it. Go to the bottom of it. They have, they have paralyzed the Ministry of Finance. They have removed the Ministry of Finance from supervising. They have removed the power of Mr. President from appointing those whom he finds competent. And now they have subjected the deposit of Nigerians to danger. So, you will find it difficult. That is why many banks that have closed several years ago, you cannot collect your money because they have very, very useless sections of the law, which is tying the hands of Nigerians from reaping the fruits. May Allah bless you. I don't bloody care about their office. I am still the NDIC chairman. I'm re I have, have resumed. I have been inaugurated. And until Mr. President dissolved that board, nobody can ask me not to act. I will act and support the current government to rid that institution of corruption. Thank you. Please help me share this. Help me share it. I don't have the power of media. I don't have the power to pay people. But I trust you as Nigerians. You will share this to ensure that all Nigerians are carried along and to know the evil that is happening. You know, this one is toying with Nigerians, poor people who pay into the banks. You will not be able to collect your money out of no fault of your own. Now, our job is to make sure you are happy. But now they want to make you sad. They want to make you frustrated, even over your money. It will not happen. May God bless Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu. May God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. May God bless all of you who are chain champions. Nigeria will not be the same again. It's in renewed hope, and we shall win. Thank you.